All right, welcome to another Harmonious at Lunch. I got Dustin Hayes here today. We're going to dive in to the Harmonious Business Architecture. I've known Dustin for a whole three and a half minutes, and we're already best friends, but mostly because he he provides the my drug of choice, which is caffeine in the form of coffee. So Dustin, I am super excited to dive in here, get to know your story and how you got into coffee. But first, welcome to the show. I appreciate you coming. Brandon, thank you. Thank you. And just to uh, let your listeners know, I am their drug dealer of choice. That's, you know, what? we're <laughs> all about that here. If it's, if the drug is caffeine and coffee, I'm all about it. I'll sell that drug all day long. So let's, let's back up to the beginning. Uh, tell me where are your roots in business? How'd you get started as being an entrepreneur? Yeah. So I, I got started in, uh, when I medically retired out of the military, kind of lost my way. But I found my drive, my purpose, and my vision uh, because in the military, I had a purpose, a drive, and a mission. But once I got medically retired, I lost that. And then I found my, my purpose, my drive, and my vision in entrepreneurship. And my first business was a construction business. I had nothing. I didn't know really anything about construction. I just ended up partnering with somebody who was a guru in it and taught me a whole bunch what I needed to know. And... It went from there, went up, and uh, we made a really great business. And uh, we made a couple of wrong moves. One of my business partners died, and then the other, me and him, just didn't quite get along. And uh, he ended up costing me a million dollars. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And uh, from there, I opened another business, a solar cleaning business. And again, I didn't know anything about these businesses when I opened them. I just researched and uh, took the leap of faith, you know, and I didn't let fear drive my decisions. I let failure along the way educate me. So opened the business, boom, did good, rock and rolling with the solar clean business, came down with skin cancer and was going to close the business down because I only had it for about five months, but I had a good book of business. Then I turned over and said, you know what? Uh, we still kept networking and hustling and had somebody who would work for me who was in the same line of business, but his business was slow and mine was thriving. So I hired him on to, to do them for me. And then I had two people in the same week ask me if I wanted to sell my business. And I was like, that's a sign. I'm going to go ahead and do it. <laughs> <laughs> so sold that business. And then I was uh, sitting on my computer going, what in the hell am I going to do with my life now drinking Starbucks? And uh, I was, I, looked at Starbucks cup and if they can do it, I can do it. And, uh, I had no, I was only a consumer in coffee. I had no background in coffee. I would only go to a place to buy it or have a drip machine at home and make it myself. So again, went to old Google, man, just pow, started pounding away, research, research, research. And within a week I had my business open. That's incredible. So, it, I mean, first of all, there's there's so much to unpack there. But the one thing that you hit on from the beginning that we talk about all the time at What If with our clients, and it's where we start with everybody, and it's what I feel most entrepreneurs miss is what you saw was so important was that you were you had in the military the mission, the vision, your purpose. And then when you transitioned to civilian life, you, you lost some of that, but you needed to get it back in order to start a business. So could you share a little bit of your initial, and I don't know if it's changed over the years, but your initial mission and vision for starting a business and how that kind of propelled you forward? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the purpose and the drive was it just, it was a hard road to find again. And I had a couple of jobs, but I hated going to work. I hated going to the job. I hated going and being in that office space. And I was like, well, I needed to change. I've always wanted to open up my own business. I just didn't know what. Mm -hmm. And so this presented, this opportunity presented itself about going into construction. And first it started as in some, me coming on board to somebody else's company because of my, my uh, uh, certifications that I can bring along. But then I'm a hard knocks kind of guy. Like, I don't like to take the easy road of anything. <laughs> and I was like, well, how about I just start my own business? But how I found my purpose and my drive was through a series of really mindset, you know, figuring out what I didn't like and what I didn't like to do. And I tell three, I tell, I tell three things, execute, execute, execute. What I want to do in life, what outcome do I want in my life? And what is my goal? And whatever you do, you can do that entrepreneurship, or you can do that in a job. 
Because if your goal is to travel, well, then find an office job is probably not the right one for you if you want to go and continually travel and have 12 vacations a year. Um, or if it's, hey, I want to be social in a corporate setting and secured in my uh, employment, uh, which I hate to tell you this, there's actually no th such thing as security unless you create your own security. That's just the real talk right there. I don't know if the people can handle that. <laughs> <laughs> they should. No, I know. True. True. It, drop us some hard truths. Um, but it was really getting over my depression, uh, what propelled me forward and got me to it going, you know what? I should probably work on myself a little bit through this. Now I lost myself along the way as well, but, uh, I found, I found my purpose, my drive and my vision again, uh, through a series of failures. Um, but failure was my number one thing. Um, roadblocks kept hitting kept blocking and most of the time people are going to give up at these roadblocks and I, I will tell you this and I will tell you this I will tell you this push forward you're not an entrepreneur unless you want to quit three times a week <laughs> or a day <laughs> some days <laughs> yeah I, I'm, try, I'm trying not to blow their mind <laughs> <laughs> you know but yes yeah you're not an entrepreneur unless you want to quit three times a week you know and say in doubt self-doubt mm -hmm. but you have to get into a rhythm to push past that to get those negative thoughts out and say, but I can do this. Especially when you go back and look at day one to whatever you're at in your business, because day one and the first three months are going to be difficult. The first six months are going to be hard. First year, first five years, very difficult. You get past these points and you're going to be like, now what? Yeah. Bring it. Um, but mindset, 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 and execute, execute, execute. Prepare, preparation, parry for future. So just keep those little tidbits of mind. And uh, again, don't be afraid to, to jump into something you don't know. Google is your friend and YouTube will teach you anything you need to know about damn near anything. Yeah, that's and and I'm sure people like you, if you picked up the phone or, or got on Facebook and sent a message, I, I personally, I love helping. When people reach out to me, I love to help as much as possible. I know other entrepreneurs and business owners do. So surround yourself with positive people who want to move you forward. Um, now, I want to dive in. You So you started two businesses. You lost a million dollars. You had some good business, some bad business. Um, but I want to dive into where you are now. So I'm going to put your website on the screen here. I checked out your the names on your coffee, and they're amazing. I, I am in love with everything on your website. And I told you, you're my drug dealer of choice. So, so let's dive in. You're, you're creating this business. Uh, how long ago is that? First of all. So I created this business two years ago. Okay. As so tell really, me what, what has yeah. happened over the last two years? Where did you start and, and how did you get to where you are now? So I started it really as kind of a hobby. I didn't really start it as a real business um, until six months ago. And when I said, you know what, I'm doing this full time, I'm propelling this thing forward. So I just kind of let it float along, really. Plus, I was dealing with a couple other things. Now, when I said I lost a million dollars, uh, I was also also om almost homeless. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't just losing a million dollars. I also lost my house uh, wow. along with it. Um, so I had a, and personal things with my kids uh, and also my own mentality uh, because I almost committed suicide a couple of years ago. And so it was that point i was like you know what i have to put this on side it's there it's just kind of flowing uh but i have to work on me because if i don't work on me it's gonna put me in the grave mm. so i took a lot of time to work on me and six months ago i was like rock and roll let's do this so it's really like six months ago is where i really began the foot traction uh it's it's just gone up every single month it's just ch -ch 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 -ch. and you love the names now just wait till it's coming soon because I'm actually changing some of the names and every some stuff that is going on with those. So uh, just just wait, just wait. Um, there's also some really awesome partnerships that are kind of coming about, uh, kind of partnered up with the Public Square. I don't know if you've heard of Public Square. No. Yeah, Public Square has kind of brought me on and kind of taken me underneath their wing a little bit and like showboating me around. So that was cool. Um, uh, because of what we stand for, we stand for freedom and coffee, you know, two things Americans love freedom and coffee. And That's if you don't true. love coffee, you know, somebody who loves coffee. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> 
Um, but yeah, we're, we're, we're growing hand over fist. Uh, right now we're at Fleet Week this weekend in San Diego. So come by the booth, say hi, grab you some free sample of coffee. I have some bags, some swag there for sale. And then uh, I'm at the VIB, uh, Vis- Veterans in Business Network com- annual conference starting the 12th through the 13th. If you don't know what that is and you're a veteran and you're in business and you want to do business with a uh, agency, you need to go hit up that that network because it is absolutely tremendous. They will get you exactly ready to go and it won't cost you a dime. Yeah, that's awesome. What was that one more time? I want to drop it in the comments so people have yeah. to do it. Veterans and Business Network. All right, I will drop that in the comments here. Um, but I, I want to also talk about, you know, starting this business, really diving in six months ago. I, you're, it's so new, and I don't know if you're doing anything with this, but your story is so unique. Uh, coming from the military, working on yourself, you, depression, um, you know, almost committing suicide. These are these are heavy things, and obviously big moments in your life. Are you doing anything through your business to impact and help other veterans, or if not, do you have a plan to? Yeah, absolutely. So everything, a portion of our proceeds, everything that I sell goes to a nonprofit that helps uh, suicide prevention. Uh, it was with our veterans, uh, but there's also other, other agencies that I've or nonprofits I've partnered up with to give some of those proceeds to. Uh, one is uh, Shelter to Soldier Foundation, where they take a shelter dog, train them to be a PTSD or emotional support animal. Uh, another one was STEP, Support the Enlisted Project. About 1% or a little bit less than 1% of our active duty military is actually homeless, which is freaking nuts. I didn't even know that. Uh, I have did a toy drive for them, and I think this year I'm trying to get people to donate not a toy drive, but a actual f- a drive to sponsor a family. Uh, mm-hmm. Last year we were 60 short, and when I heard about it after – Christmas, I was like, whoa, how come we're 60 short? Then we should be tapping into our network and saying, hey, we got 60 people, 60 families that need your help. That's what you need to do. So support the enlisted project. Go there. Go adopt a family. Go get them some Christmas presents for the holidays and let them be cheered up. And then another one is Walk to Talk America, where they actually took the two-way community and uh, non and mental health and combined it together. So if you are a Somebody who is a second amendment lover can go and say, Hey, you know what? I'm having some issues. I, I probably need to go get these taken care of, but I don't want my guns taken away. Go talk to those people, man. They'll get you scored away. They'll point you in the right direction. And we'll also bust some myths about, you know, second amendment and mental health. Also, um, I have a podcast called Coffee Conversations and Badasses Podcast, and we talk about mental health. We talk about addictions. We talk about relationships and we talk about business struggles as well. And uh, a portion, if you go to my Patreon, Coffee Conversations and Badasses podcast on Patreon, and you subscribe, it's only three bucks, uh, one dollar of every one dollar uh, every month goes to a nonprofit. That's amazing. And it, I want you to send me all these links. We'll put them in the show okay. notes, we'll put them in the comments so, so you can go check out um, all of what Dustin has going on. It's, it's actually amazing. Most, especially newer entrepreneurs being six months in are so consumed with how do I make a dollar today and tomorrow to keep the lights on and you're already giving back and your mission focus, which I love. I really love. So let's, let's touch on that real quick. Cause I want to, I want to figure out, you know, where's this business going and then we'll wrap up here, keep this nice and short. Um, can you speak to the vision you have for this company now? Like you, you said that was important getting started in business and now What's the vision for the company and where are you going in the next three to five years? So the vision of the company now is actually hire veterans to get them gainful employment um, and get them through if they're in need to get them in the process of getting whatever they need uh, sorted out. Because what the one of the th- hardest things as a veteran to do is go into a company and then start to say, hey, I need some time off for VA. Hey, I've got this going on. I've got this going on. Only another veteran could really relate and say, Man, I've been there. I've done that. And that's the kind of culture we want to create. We want to create that culture-like uh, atmosphere in the company or that military culture atmosphere in the company and uh, hire veterans, uh, especially disabled veterans or combat injured veterans. And if they don't want to get hired, then their spouses. Uh, in the next future, we're looking to, man, blow the, blow the lid off this thing, really, man, is grocery stores. If you own a coffee shop, uh, we, we wholesale the coffee shops. 
So that way you can get some badass coffee in your cup. We also white label. So if you don't want to use mine, that's fine. I understand that too. Uh, we could put your label on it and that way it's your product. You're selling it. Uh, and you get some badass, delicious coffee. That's so cool. All right. Before we wrap up here, let me, let me just ask one last thing. And that is what is, what is the one thing you want a small business owner or an entrepreneur to do from this episode, everything you've shared so that they too can have the vision of success that you do and they can propel themselves to take on their next three, six, 12 months in business. You're not going to do it alone. So it's like a baseball team. You got to have your starting lineup. And if people are not there cheering you on, making your life better, you need to surround yourself with those kind of people. If you are wanting an e-commerce business or whatever kind of business you want to go into, seek out a mentor that has been there, has done that a couple of times, because they're going to give you some real knowledge of how to do it and surround yourself with people who are uh, more experienced than you and who can actually give you some real knowledge. And if the people are being negative, uh, because every single business that I opened up, I had a bunch of people sit there and tell me I couldn't do it. I'm going to fail. I'm going to do this. Those people don't belong on your bench. They're not on your team. So take them off your team. I'm not saying not be friends with them. I'm not saying, you know, <laughs> don't throw family to the side. Uh, but if that's the point and that has to happen, sometimes that has to happen. But I'm saying take those people out. Don't let the naysayers in. Just positivity and you're not going to do it alone. So make sure you build your team. That is so important, especially keeping a clear mind in business. And yeah, there's 10, it's 10 to one, the amount of naysayers versus positive people that you keep around you, which always blows my mind. Um, but listen, this was awesome. Let me tie this up real quick to the harmonious architecture, and then we'll get you back to work, back to lunch, whatever you were doing before you came and hung out with us here. Um, but, you know, Dustin talked about a lot of different things and we, we stayed heavy in navigate, which is, you know, where's your business going? And what if we talk about that's the, the core values, your mission and your vision and how you tie that to the rest of your business. I can tell very clearly that Dustin's vision is, is very clear and it's carrying his business forward. He knows where he's going. He knows what he's doing. And most importantly, he knows why he's doing it. And I'm sure your employees do too, which is exactly what you want to see. The other part that you just touched on was home. Humans optimize in a meaningful environment. A lot of companies will call this HR. We don't believe in human resources. That's a dumb term. That's where it would fall. But surrounding yourselves with that team of people moving you forward and veterans, you're building a culture within your company that falls under home. There's you are very ingrained in the harmonious architecture and you don't even know it, which I love to see. Uh, if you watching out there, you want to see where your business stands. Go take our diagnostic. It's free. It'll take you eight minutes and you'll see exactly what is going on in your business, what's working, what's not working, and what discipline of the 10 that make up Harmonious needs the most help right now. Dustin, I want to thank you so, so much for coming on here and just rocking out with me for 20 minutes here. Go visit redwhiteandbadassbrew.com. And will you keep me in the loop when you release these new names? Because I'm super excited to go check it out. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. I'll drop them to you, man. Awesome. All right. We'll put everything in the show notes, all the links, go follow Dustin, go hang out with him, buy his coffee, shop local, no more Starbucks. Starbucks is out. Yeah. Red, white, badass brew. We will see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Launch. Dustin, thanks again. We'll see you next time. Awesome. Thanks, Brandon.